Hi. Ah, we're live. I need a hat or something. I'm not totally sure how this hat thing's going to work with my headset because my peace speakers decided to just go out on me. Ah, that's and not going to work. Just assuming this is streaming to Facebook, I don't even really. Let me check. Let's see here. To Facebook. Any. Any. Um. I can go get mine. Don't see any new. Wait, no, we are. We're streaming to Facebook. There we are. Oh, okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right. I have a dog. And and there's dogs. Dogs. <gasps> dogs. Oh, right, I gotta show got your hat. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I have um, it sitting on my headphones because that's if that's gonna be oh wait, maybe I can be smart and do the whole like cool kid thing. No, that's gonna fall. Uh... No hat today. Ooh. But we do no, have a ghost. Very, very informal today. Very informal. At least, at least on this side. I have a hat. Uh, yeah, but okay, just me. It's just me. I'm informal. That's okay. Slouchy. Okay. Where my my bracelet thing? I have a thing in the background. Go play Minecraft. <laughs> it's okay to show kids and pets. All right. Now, how is Flavio able to see who was? Oh, See, Don't like I posted that. a thing. I see that. Show? I can show anything. <laughs> oh. Ah! That was weird. Banners, brand, coach. So what I don't know still is how Flavio was able to tell who was following. Oh, there it is. Three live viewers. Somebody's uh, me. Rick and Suko. Hey, Mick, Mick and Suko. Excuse me, Mick. Sorry. Hey, Suko. Uh, all right. We're live again. We're continuing. And Jack has very little continue. time, so we should probably just get this started. How's that be? Turn you up. Okay. Hello. Hi. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm going to try this. Okay. As, we, as we get this started and see how this works out. Hello, you have tuned in to the Texas Steampunk Connection, as uh, hopefully you do every two weeks on Tuesday night. Uh, we're coming to you from our mysterious bunkers and airships across the state of Texas. Um, I am uh, Thax, the Gentleman Adventurer, and with me tonight we have Jack, a uh, facilitator of a Steam Chest. Uh, that's chestofsteam.com for all of you. And uh, generally, usually, we uh, come here to speak of all things steampunk and uh, what is happening in the great free state of Texas. So welcome. Welcome, hey, welcome. Here. Got music. We do. And I have a question for you. Is that like, is that from something? No, it is. It is, uh, um, I just say, free to use. Oh, I need to get the name of that because that's good. And I, But I, I have, have to say, the music was brought to us by zapsplat.com. There. <gasps> I, I fulfilled my end it. of the agreement. The obligation has been done. I love it. <laughs> I feel that every every freaking time I gotta I gotta put a video and they're like oh but you gotta put her name in there I'm like mm, okay there you go and here you go I'm gonna be overly over the top with it oh so are we are we ready for the podcast within a podcast oh if you're ready then I'm ready yeah I mean I have a couple of choices here um, I have been enjoying a certain something given to me <laughs> by attacks here. This is, I have to ask, I did not, I forgot, it's monkey what? <laughs> no, monkey butt is a baby wipe. Oh, 
Well, well yes, and then there's butt paste <laughs> that goes shoulder. with monkey. Yeah. Monkey shoulder is shoulder. the the okay. blended scotch that that you have in that. Um, it is a, a a pretty good middle of the road entry level scotch that's not too expensive. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I thought it was pretty good. It's really it's, good. I um, as you could you could tell it's it, it's it's been enjoyed over the weekend. It's been a rough week, and it's only uh, yeah. Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, technically, our week started like you know a couple weeks back. I have found out that I have not touched my editing software until was it two days ago, and it was twenty three days. It's like it's just been rough. But looks like I have been served a wonderful <laughs> caramel macchiato. Actually, I know, I know, I know. My mother-in-law downstairs has got a frother, and so she's playing. And now I'm going to be staying up all night. I may just have to add some of this to it. When you said you've been served, that's not what I thought you were going to say. It's like, oh, you know, that that happens on that, hap that happens on Wednesdays. I have a, I have it completely <laughs> planned out. I allow my public persona to be known where I will be on a Wednesday evening just for that very reason. <laughs> and then plan not to be there because I don't want to be served. That's a terrible thing. So I don't show up. They'll find you sooner or later. Yeah, they found that one guy. He was diving <laughs> around it. That was great. I am drinking a Shiner S'more which I think I have had since last fall, early spring. I don't know. Wow, Been in the fridge. Good. It's it's okay. It's a shiner. It's mostly a shiner. That's what Flavia always used to say. It's a uh, we got our, our the shiner uh, cheer uh, one Christmas season. And he says, oh, that sounds, that sounds good. What does that taste like? And the guy he was talking to says, well, you have it in your hand. And he said, oh, it tastes like shiner. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it just tastes like they just add a little extra like flavor sense thing to it, and uh, I, I don't know. I hate to say it. Sometimes they don't come off as well as they would hope. Like this definitely has a little cinnamon graham cracker kind of in there, but not too strong. Hello, Rita. Hey, Rita. And, and what are you drinking over there? Erica is not. Not drinking anything, Never but what I happened to hand to her. Hand her. Uh, <clears throat> well, I'll admit that outside of the coffee, which was unplanned, and the flask, not... which I do have to the side, I'm actually drinking this uh, wonderful beer. And oh, oh yeah, yeah, Carbon. it's. I like it. It's just it's soft. It's nice. It's great. It it's a good blonde. It's got enough oomph that you don't feel like you're drinking a, a light beer per se. But it's not too heavy either. Perfect as a uh, as as a chaser for your your caramel macchiato. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I believe Carbach is like a dollar less for a six pack at the local H E B than any of the yes. other craft beers. It is, uh, it is good. They also frequently have Carbach at uh, Free Beer Saturday at oh, yeah. Micklethwaite's. Mm -hmm. So, so my nice. favorite. Uh, barbecue joint in town uh, gives away free beer on well, Saturday that, morning. That, oh, Saturday morning. You got to be up oh, on a Saturday morning to go get your free beer. 10 or 11. Yeah, it's oh, brunch. Okay. It's, it's, not like, brunch. it's not like, oh, we're going to get you at 6 a.m. with the free beer. No, nobody gets up that early on a Saturday, God forbid. I mean, Except for the barbecue smoking the barbecue guy. people. They're up at six. They're up at like four in the morning smoking that they, thing. Where they're up from last night smoking. Smoking it those meats. I have a guy who lives a couple of doors down from me. He's got one of the big trailers that he does because he does it for like large, uh, large gatherings or whatever. And so he'll cook a whole bunch, and then he'll just like leave it on the grill and drive out to it and then open the grills up. But uh, like he was out there last week. And, oh my god! It's like brisket just permeates the entire like cul-de-sac. It just like sits there. And you can almost eat the eat eat like the humidity in the air. It, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's heavy. Uh, I find it bizarre to go to other states that tout their barbecue, and there's no brisket. And to me, that's that's 
that's the backbone of what barbecue means. Yeah, most people think like, oh, I have barbecue. It's it's craft barbecue stuff poured over chicken. I'm like, I mean, that's good, but it's well, not. It's not like smoke. There's a difference between I think. barbecue and grilling for for me. Yeah, but in other states, they they tote their their short ribs, their pork, you know, and they've got a different uh, sauce that they want to put on it. Sauce is weird to me. That doesn't go in Texas barbecue, but it's, it's just a really weird how it's a different point of view. Yeah. <laughs> and no it's brisket. Like, it, it, well, brisket's expensive. I can understand. Now, of course, I'm about to, to go out and br barbecue a, uh, a um, what do you call it? Skirt steak, which skirt steak is good. I, I, I did not know it was going to be as good as it was. And it's a fairly cheap piece of meat, or it used to be uh, till COVID stuff yeah everything's expensive. It's a lot of meat and it's already cut to be like this thin and you just like chop it into pieces and there's a lot of it and i can cook i can grill for a bunch of people yeah that's what they make fajitas out of beef fajitas mm -hmm. same cut well i guess it's time to uh bring up the elephant in the room uh for those of us those of you who are watching or our regular listeners, you'll notice there's a, there's a piece of the show missing. Uh, there's only the two of us tonight. Not that that's unusual. Sometimes somebody can't make it and we bring in a, a, a guest host or something, but that's not the case. Um, the uh, founder of the show, Flavio Faz, uh, passed away on us two weeks ago, Thursday night, Friday morning. Um. <clears throat> In his in his sleep, we I have no idea uh, beyond that. Um, he he wasn't sick to anyone's knowledge. Uh, he, 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 heart disease did run in his family, but I haven't heard uh, definitively that he had a heart attack. He just uh, he was just gone. Uh, so that's lame. Now I have to learn all his stuff. <laughs> You'll forgive me. I use comedy as a crutch and I'm not even good at it. But uh, <laughs> we've also had, you know, since, what was it, the 15th? Uh, we, we've had a, a week and a half or so to sort of adjust. Um, so, so uh, you know, it's... It's rough. We, uh, Erica, Jack, and I uh, were among the uh, folks that went to his, his funeral last Friday. Um, he had a big family. Oh, yeah. Was a lot. I was, yeah, he had like half a church full of people that were just family. Yeah. I, from stories he told me, they basically run that church. Oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> That, that's not didn't a joke. Didn't join the family business, did he? Uh, no. He he no. was uh, agnostic. <laughs> but his mom was always trying to set him up with ladies from the church. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> talked about some of those stories in the car. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, aside from this big family, uh, I was thinking about this on the way home tonight. I saw a lot of... Uh, people that I hadn't seen in, in two decades that were friends of Flavio's that he kept contact with that uh, he was just amazingly uh, loyal and, and kept friends for long, long time. Uh, we, we met a friend of his who uh, he, he met in like sixth grade and they were still, you know, keeping in contact. And he flew down from Michigan to to see him off. Uh, just we heard so many stories from from old old friends of his that that were just uh, just really nice to hear, you know, really inspiring and uh, really yeah brought a piece of Flavio uh, back for us a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't have the the paper on me, but I, I really liked. We had we had actually two formal um, I, obituaries. Is not quite oh, yeah. the right word, but um, we, we had kind of the the formal one that the family made, and then I think we had the informal one that that Erica helped make. Uh, no, no? Or, I mean. She she was quoted, but uh, um, yeah. Megan made it. Uh, Megan made this one right here. Yeah, one of them was sort of the the church um, service. You know, it lists uh, what happens and in what order it's in the service. Um, that that's pretty familiar to me as having grown up a uh, Catholic. You get you get a little uh, booklet when you go to church to everybody play sing the same songs at the same time and they're going to talk about this and that and the other. Uh, but then the uh, the memorial um, right here had Flavio's picture and and write ups and stuff and Derica was quoted in it. Yeah, um, Megan did a really nice job. She's not a listener, I don't think. No. Not a live listener. Maybe she'll hear this later. Um, but they they were really close friends, uh, Kyle and Megan. Uh, he hung out with them very regularly, uh, played online games with Kyle. Um, it was really hard on Megan. Uh, it was hard on all of us, but she, she had a really rough time. Yeah. And she put together the slideshow as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. She posted one online mm -hmm. uh, that I guess we could pass on to the uh, Texas Steampunk Connection. A lot of the pictures were, you know, Flavio doing steampunk stuff with us. Uh, we traveled with him. Uh, I'd known him for, <laughs> I met him 20 uh, years ago um, and started hanging out with him roughly yeah. eight, ten, eight to ten years ago as we started doing steampunk. Uh, so we've got a lot of history, uh, traveling Vegas, New Orleans, down to the Caribbean. <laughs> Cruising. Dickens on the Strand, Dickens and Bernie. Uh, lots of stories. Lots of fun. I'm sitting here trying to remember the first time I met him. It was I, I think it was both of you, or all three of you, and it was at a it's, convention. I was probably a Steampunk November. Probably like one of the first ones, like five years ago. Then, uh, six. When was your first one? Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe four or five years ago. We didn't get to the first couple of Steampunk I didn't Um We were not obtaining him, but Jack wasn't there. I'm responding yeah. to uh, Jenny Lynn, who's posted. Yeah, that's that's <clears throat> the first time I remember meeting Flavio was for. Unobtained. Well, no, no. We were friends with him before that. We. That's another. That's a whole another story. <laughs> that's a long story. Oh, that sounds like it should be next week or two weeks from yeah. now. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. 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 He was. He was one of the actors for Unobtainium. <laughs> he made up a character called Rico, who was a gambler and a rogue, of course. <laughs> of course. Which is funny because Flavio, I. I did not fit the gambler sort of persona <laughs> as a person. No, uh, he fits the, I, he loses at gambling to someone more like my character. <laughs> full advantage of it. <laughs> While feeding him drinks the entire time. <clears throat> well, I guess he did win then. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It depends <laughs> what you want to get out of it all. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the belly dancing show in San Marcos. That was fun. I think um, our friend, uh, was oh, it yeah. Virginia or was it uh, Sabella or both of them that were, that were playing? She, one of them was playing music. One of them was doing dancing. Anyway, so we went to. I think to, Sabella was, was dancing, definitely. So we went to visit, we went to see her and we dressed up steampunk, of course. And I remember seeing Nicole there. Uh, yeah. She was like on the way other side of the room. 
they had to like shove us. They had to get another table for us. We'd bought tickets ahead, so they couldn't kick us out. <laughs> but they didn't have a place to sit us, so they shoved us in a, uh, at a table. And Nicole saw us, and on the way out, she came over and said hello. Uh, that was that was uh, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> that was fun. Oh. I probably have pictures of that somewhere. It's all right. I still remember the first time she threw me in jail. <laughs> things you remember from these conv- I, that's one reason I love these things so much is that you can say things to like normal people around like I remember the first time Nicole threw me in jail and everyone's just like what what yeah. You know, oh yeah remember, like it was a two like remember it was like a Saturday on like in a certain November you know it's just, just and everyone's just like what and of course you could just pull the whole like storyline out like we already had it going on and everyone just thinks you're nuts and then you just wander off <laughs> Leave them guessing, and they'll they'll go up to people like, "What does that really happen?" Like, "Well, e- yes," and then they give context, and they're like, "Oh, but I don't like it. I don't like context. Context in that way just, <laughs> just destroys the allure." Yeah, I mean, if, don't bog it down with too many facts. Shh, facts. We are, we've, we've dealt with facts before. We don't like them, obviously, and uh, as as a nation, apparently. But we'll we'll move away from that one really quick. <laughs> <laughs> There were some people uh, from uh, Amp Guard and and or High Fantasy Society at at the funeral also that we hadn't seen in years and years. That that's where I met Flavio uh, twenty years ago when everybody had better knees. Um, we played a a combat LARP, hit each other with foam padded sticks kind of game. I miss those. I want to. Um, and yeah, sometimes I still miss them, but I, I'm just not that energetic anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what did Flavio say? He started using the bow and arrow, and people would dance around and want to fight and stuff, and he'd just be like, <laughs> <laughs> and "He was a good shot too." I heard oh, stories wow. about him shooting around trees. Oh, nice! <laughs> Things you can pull off with foam arrows. There, I, I've done like target archery a little bit, like mm-hmm. in high school, but it's not nearly as fun as shooting at people. No, it, it, I can imagine. I, I played paintball, and you want to say something that's bad for your knees? Holy crap! But oh my gosh, you don't feel it for like you feel it for like a day later when your entire body hurts because you have enough adrenaline just pumping through your system because you're being shot at. <laughs> and it basically, you just have this like this 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 thing hits in your brain going, "You are being hunted. You should run." And you're just like, "Okay." Doesn't Professor Elemental have a song about that? <laughs> So you were being hunted. It's a game, I know. Uh, there's, it's actually a game where you're trying to escape this island, and you're being att- you're being chased by these massive robots that speak with a heavy British accent, and they look like they're from like ex military from the 1800s, like British Marines, and it's called like Sir, you are being hunted or something like that. Oh my God, yeah. I'm correct. Professor Elemental has a video called Sir, you are being hunted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. Which I can't play because it is not royalty free. We can put a link to it. Oh yeah, yeah. Just go look it up. It's it's fun. Um, I haven't heard that one in forever. I forgot about that. Back in my LARP days, not me, but the younger guys who are more self abusive, they wore these hockey mechs, right? The, mm-hmm. These uh, hockey pads on their shins. Smart. That came up over their over their knees, and it's part of the game. If you were hitting the leg, you had to kneel down on it. So these were pr- in, presumably to protect their knees. Well, there was no rule in the game that said you could not walk or even run as long as you were on your knees. So I saw these guys running across the field using their knees as feet. Ouch nearly as fast as they would run on their whole leg. Of course. They're all crippled now. Yeah, yeah. One of them um, after he after the game was was over and he'd moved on, he was playing like frisbee golf one day and was just sort of jogging across uh, the park and his knee exploded. (laughs) (laughs) Don't use words like exploded. 
holding, trying to hold his kneecap onto his body, asking for somebody to please call an ambulance. <laughs> because years before, he used that kneecap as a shoe. Oh. So don't do that. Be kind to your knees if you still have them, everyone. <laughs> yes. They're the ones things that don't replace well. Like, many other parts of your body are fairly easy to replace you, were, you wouldn't expect. Or at least able, like, with modern technology to either, like, do surgery on and or just completely cleave off and replace with it with robotics. Erica has a cybernetic eyeball. Semi-ish. I have an implanted lens. Oh. Oh. And when the light hits it just right, you can see that it is not see, organic. Well, here's the thing. I thought she just had LASIK because she has that same glinty thing that my father-in-law has. And he got LASIK surgery. And after that, he just looks like he looks like Santa Claus with his twinkle in the eye. But the twinkle never goes away and it's almost creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same here. Same, same. Yeah, but the... She's got the creepy twinkle the in the eye. Is completely replaced with something else. Okay, that's you know what he may have that too. That's interesting, huh? So do you like notice it being any different than like your eyeball prior? Um. Well, Outside I can of see. being able to see. Yeah, yeah. Wait, doesn't good. need. She doesn't need to wear glasses anymore. In that eye. Yeah, I can't she wear is the perfect component for a monocle. Then. Yeah, I could I could do a monocle in the in the eye that's still mm. uh, organic. <laughs> Or I can just wear a contact lens in the one eye, but I can't wear glasses anymore because the prescriptions are too far different. It would make me nauseous. Mm, yeah, no, I understand that. Uh, yep. Anyway, so that's just, fun. I was, here's the thing though, is that we live in the future. This is the year 2021. We should be able to get like entire cloned new bodies. You know, when I hit 50, they should have thrown me into a 20 year old body and said, go get them girl. See, I'm we're waiting for that. Happened, and I'm disappointed. I mean, well, there, there are a whole bunch of movies about that. One of them called The Island that uh, had, had Obi-Wan Kenobi playing playing one of the characters in it. What? I, I know, right? And uh, I actually, I will admit, I have not seen that movie. I just know the premise of it completely. You know, It's creepy. Of, yeah, I, I bet. Yeah. A lot of clones. Yeah, here, here. Exactly. Uh See, I'm just looking for that moment when they're like, all right, we're going to scan your brain and we're going to just implant you into this like computer. And then if you want to go into a cybernetic body made by Apple or Samsung, <clears throat> sure, go for it. Actually, we'll just... uh, Elon Musk is working on that. Yeah, he's he's um, one of them working on that. Just give me yeah. an internet connection. Just give me an internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the internet too much as it is. What <laughs> will be the difference then? <laughs> You won't feel your knees thin, though. <laughs> you make a good argument. I make it mean, beg to differ. Which is a new movie coming out? Uh, the Matrix Reloaded or something? Reloaded, Reloaded? That... Matrix Reinvented. Now, all right, so I got some things. I'm going to go off on the limb on this one because it's there's, so, there's some things on this one that I make me really wonder how it's going to go. Because in the trailer... It's like they're in the Matrix, but I don't know if Keanu Reeves really knows he's in the Matrix because he talks to certain people and one looks and it really sounds like he was like a rock star or a movie star and that the Matrix was a movie he did because it's like the Matrix knew they couldn't wipe everything from his brain. So they had to just warp the world around him. And it works with that line that um, cue ball guy said about put me back in there, make me rich or something, you know an actor perhaps. So it really was able to play off the whole like matrix thing was a set of movies and it's in there and it goes really well with that whole idea that if there's a kernel of truth, it's easier to hide a lie. And so if the lie is the fact that the matrix is real and everyone's in it because everyone was put back into it and they changed the colors, all the colors of the old ones, when you're in the matrix, it's green and everything's like overly blue or kind of real, like way too gritty nitty for in real in real life, and now like at the end of the Matrix Three, everything switched from being a green tinge to an overly huge blue tinge, and now like when they're looking at Keanu Reeves, everything's like that way oversaturated blue in the trailer. So 
you, you see, I've had a little bit of time to really like they, my brain just kind of expanded on this. I really believe he's in the Matrix and he's thinking he's a movie star and the computers are just like, let's just see how long we can keep this facade because we can't delete him because he's in, he's important and necessary. And as long as we can keep him contained, everything's peachy. I saw a video, uh, a channel called Film Theory, I think. Yeah. It basically they, laid out the exact same thing you just wow. said. Wow. I got to go look that up. Am I that am I that intelligent or am I just is it that blatant? Uh, I mean, <laughs> it it is a Wachowski movie, like the new one. It's written uh, mm -hmm. by one of the the Sibs. sisters, um, and so I mean, it's going to stay fairly consistent. Uh, not like a Disney film, um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and yeah, there's all these points that. They they make about <laughs> whoa <laughs> uh -huh. ah! about the Don't matrix. Hijack. You're not allowed. I just humaned really hard. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Can, please continue. Just, yeah, but yeah, you know, all the points you you're making that that they have to reboot the matrix every once in a while. They have to have the the, the chosen one. It's sort of a glitch that they can't get rid of. It ties into a lot of other things in the Matrix to make it work. So they have to keep having Keanu Reeves in it somewhere, I guess. <laughs> and now they're they're rewriting the Matrix and Ke Keanu's character, I don't remember his name. Neo. But but his his in the Matrix name. Thomas Anderson. That's right, Mr. Anderson. That was awesome. Uh, yes, they have to have him in. So now they're they're redefining him as this actor who was in this series of movies called The Matrix. So, you know, wow. who's going to believe the world is really a Matrix when you just made a movie about it? That's I know, crazy. Or it's going to be one of those, ha ha, yeah, we probably are all in one, you know, one big robotic, you know, machine. But you know, who cares? Scientists can't prove it. Neener neener, whatever. <laughs> kind of like right now. And this one sucks. Well, there's a way to get out. Flavio <laughs> found it. Ah, oh, that's. Uh, but we got it. We got. But I gotta be be sure on the other end. You know, I want to be. I want to be rich. You know, like an actor or something. <laughs> uh, why? I mean, out, outside of the Matrix, what does money mean? What is that? <sighs> what? But how do you know? I, here's the other thing. My, my friend brings this one up. How is all this maybe not like that game real life from Rick and Morty? Oh, see, I don't watch Rick and Morty. Oh, my God. Okay, so... It's on Hulu, and I don't give them money. <laughs> so, all right, there's this, there's this moment where uh, Rick and Morty go into a... Um, into a an arcade and rick just kind of like throws morty's head into this machine and it like you know sits down and whatnot and it turns on and he's like he freaks out at first and everything goes black and then the, he wakes up and he's a baby and he like plays out this entire lifespan of this character for like for like 80 years and like gets cancer his wife dies he goes back to the carpet store where no one appreciates him and then he finally dies and the game ends and, he, and he's just like wait whoa what what just happened it's like five minutes have passed and everyone could watch it on these big screens and rick's like oh you went back to the carpet store you're a pushover and like pushes him out of the way it's like watch what a real person does you know watch what a real badass does throws the thing on and you can't see what's going on but a whole, whole bunch of people like oh shit he's taking the character off grid like <laughs> this whole like like he's gonna take down the, the you know the government and whatever inside the game <laughs> It's like what the crap? And my one of my good friends, he kind of makes an argument that like he's just it's like I paid premium access for this. That's just his whole like thing. He's like this is the life he paid for. He's like I paid I paid for the premium package. That's why I have like you know my veteran fund and all this other stuff. It was all set up for me from the beginning. I'm just supposed to sit, come in here, and enjoy life. And he gets incredibly high. So I mean, it's that it might be playing a little bit into this too. And he lives just, in Colorado, so I mean, you know, who can blame him for thinking the way he does? You're just outlining my entire worldview <sighs> in a Rick and Morty episode. There's too many okay. of them. Too many of them outline my worldview in a Rick and Morty episodes. It's almost uncanny. Like if I was a little more violent, or if 
<laughs> if I was a little more willing to go ahead and do things I didn't care, pretty sure I'd end up doing things I shouldn't. Uh, but I have morals and caught. ethics. And... That's the only rule. Hmm? Don't get caught. Only Don't rule. Caught. Makes the game really suck. <laughs> this is this well, is a Grand Theft Auto game really fast. <laughs> so uh, I'm just I'm feel like I have to ask. Do you have anything to report? On this wow. show, I honestly Steve don't. Related. I, I don't have anything to report tonight. I actually have, and it's it's been sitting around in my phone. Let me go back. I have like fifty thousand. Uh, like whoa, well, I got thirty two windows open on my phone. Anybody and get that password? <laughs> His credit card number? Anything on there? Show so you anything important? <laughs> Maybe a scantily clad woman in, that should not. <laughs> Oh, Let's Twitter. See. I mean, what? T Twitter. <laughs> oh, no, you saw my misfortune cookie server. It generates <laughs> randomly mis random misfortunes. That's actually Gen a really good favor. website. I was a little more violent. Slogan of the night. <laughs> okay, so here's one. It was called Whatever Happened to Steampunk? And it was posted October 3rd, 2019. So, I mean, it's been a while. I found this. It just popped up randomly on my feed. And it says how the iPhone popularized steampunk and how it killed it off. And I'm like, the oh, hell? What the, the hell? IPhone? The <laughs> iPhone. And so he makes a good argument, though. And I actually kind of agree with it in many ways from, from his perspective as someone who's not in. And I can see where it's coming from. So I'm going to it's a little bit of a long argument. So I'm going to sit here and kind of read through it a little bit. So you can make the argument. And I have. That we're all living in a design era of cyberpunk. In Silicon Valley, Facebook, Google, Apple, and Microsoft are all devoted to perfecting concepts first popularized in science fiction novels, ranging from virtual reality to virtual assistance. Major advances in AI and biomodification are made in almost a daily basis, and in our media, cyberpunk is the aesthetic du jour. You see that? It's French. It's, it's like, you know. <laughs> So, and popping up in everything from Steven Spielberg movies like Ready Player One to widely anticipated video games like Cyberpunk 2077. As I wrote a few months ago, Tears in the Rain is just a motif of cyberpunk in the tech's future. Well, yes, it is. The indistinguishable blurring between that which man creates and that which is a force of nature. That is why cyberpunk isn't just sci-fi, it's design theory. But what of steampunk? Cyberpunk's anachronistic cousin, a design movement and as an aesthetic that came to prominence in the mid 2000s as a direct response to the rapid evolution of consumer electronics. Steampunk was a brass and leather alt universe in which the products we have all come to depend on were retrofitted together using technology of the late 19th century. Instead of airplanes, Steampunk embraced Zeppelins. Instead of computers powered by electricity running through silicon, Steampunk imagined great thinking machines and mainframes running calculations by churning gears. For a brief period between 2007 and 2012, Steampunk was the aesthetic everywhere, from Project Runway to Disneyland Paris. But is it all dead? What happened? Why did Steampunk die? While steampunk thrived, it turned out the iPhone has a lot to do. Oh, it turns out the iPhone has a lot to do with it. The watchwords of steampunk are gears, cocker, copper, cogs, and brass. Inspired by the literature of writers like Jules Verne, Michael Moorcock, Bruce Sterling, William Gibson, Neil Stevenson, K. H. or K. W. G. G Jeter, it stands out for its retro Victorian aesthetic. Think of it this way. If steampunk is an exploration of what future technology could be if the divide between the digital and the analog was erased. Steampunk was a thought experiment about what tech could become if the analog was taken to the extreme. So instead of console cowboys jacking their brains directly into cyberspace, steampunk is all about steam powered rocket ships and clockwork robots. From a design perspective, making technology as intuitive as the inside of a pocket watch. The elements of steampunk are all the exposing and the inner workings of technology. So it's about using design to make the working technology scrutable through an object's aesthetic. So many of the objects in today's world 
are little black boxes and what happens inside them is totally invisible. Steampunk was all about revealing those inner workings and empowering people to understand technology again, even if it was only fictitiously. In other words, steampunk is a bit of a power fantasy, not of the technologist, but of the maker, the tinkerer, the engineer, the guys who can rebuild an engine from scratch, but who are as powerless to fix the iPhone that they just dropped in the toilet as the rest of us. <laughs> I have a good Flavio story about that too. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it goes on a little more and it's frilly and makes itself a little more like, you know, kind of pulls itself a little more of its position here. But I like the idea uh, that, that idea there that it's, it was to make us feel like we were still a little bit in control of the technology in which we own or being able to break something down and re you know, rebuild it, fix it, or, or manufacture it ourselves better or less better, depending. I, I'm reading along in the article as you as you were reading oh, it. Oh, you found it. Okay. Oh yeah, and I've I posted it. Uh, but uh, the writer John Browley, um, I, I don't think he understands or appreciates the extent of the message of steampunk and how. You know, the, the demystification of technology, uh, especially when he says uh, that that last line, where did it go? Empowering people to understand technology again, even if fictitiously, because we're still not able to uh, fix our black boxes and our, our cell phones and what have you. But that's he's he's missing the point uh, for me. It's yeah, at least yeah. like. Steampunk invites you to crack open your, your cell phone mm -hmm. and fix your screen and fix your stuff. And thanks to stuff like YouTube, you can go and find out how to do it. Yeah. It and teaches you to void warranties. <laughs> exactly. That's what I think of a warranty. Um, and, and the idea that people are, are doing that, they're going into their, their, you know, their computers, they're building steampunk style keyboards. People are building keyboards mm -hmm. from scratch. Yeah. Not necessarily steampunk so, people, but it's an invitation to do it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there's whole places you can now order custom keyboards the way you want them printed completely. Like if you want to have 10 keys on one side or like, you know, only have three keys a total, you can get them. Um, I think his perspective was on like the design, like the whole just i don't know the whole design i had the word aesthetic there we are but um yeah he's just looking at it from an aesthetic position and i okay. think as an aesthetic mindset because he is writing about the iphone and it's very bland and it's very streamlined it's very streak and it's very mysterious i don't have one this is a samsung but <laughs> it's the same thing i don't know how to fix this if it breaks like and i, I build computers when I want to for fun, but uh, you know, I, I do like his that used to do steampunk probably in that time have gone on and they're now either doing maker fair type stuff mm -hmm. or, and, or burn events, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so there's still, there's still that DIY um, mix up technology and art and um, craziness. <laughs> But it, it's kind of gone off in other directions, which I think is is a healthy thing, you know. And things grow, they change. And for a great many of us, I'm sure uh, steampunk was specifically for the aesthetic, and that's cool too. Um, you don't have to know how your cell phone works to appreciate, you know, gluing some don't. gears on it. Dare I say, or making it look however you want it to look. And that's cool, and I bet those people are still doing that. Mm -hmm. um, just not in John's world, wherever that is. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things he also mentions is that just kind of on the whole whole thing of that, we also destruct, we distrust new technology, something we outgrow as a culture. Most people mm -hmm. don't fear about getting an x-ray now or jumping on an airplane, but there was a time when these fears were common. So perhaps it's no surprise that nearly two decades after steampunk first became popular as a design movement, 
and more than a decade after it peaked as a response to the iPhone, steampunk has all but died off. I don't agree with that part because obviously it isn't. Mm -hmm. But despite the fact that technology is more inscrutable than ever, uh, I think that steampunk might have been the desperate last attempt of boomers like me. So he's a boomer to understand technology and make it transparent before they gave up completely. So oh. I, I could kind of understand that as like, I don't understand, like as a computer guy, I remember when the first one of these rolled up to me, it was a Blackberry and it had the buttons, you know, the whole keyboard on it. I ran up to me at a, at a college when I was working at college. And I said, is there a way I can get my email on this? I looked at it. I'm like, I'm sure there is, but why would you want to? Like, <laughs> I'm in front of a computer 24 seven nearly. I don't, why do I want it on my phone? Of course, I'm sitting there carrying around a Nokia brick, which <laughs> still hasn't died. I'm sure, you know, but oh, anyway. never will. Never. No, no. I'm going to keep the thing around just in case, because technically it still has a cell card in it that will actually connect to the cell towers. I'm like, <laughs> when the world ends, I will re-up my subscription for this one. I'll buy some minutes <laughs> from Cricket or something. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, don't know. I thought it was a very interesting take from someone who's not a steampunk person, who's looking at steampunk and trying to like compare it to today's modern technology. And uh, it goes on. He's got it goes on for pages a little bit, you know, a little few more pages after His that. Bio right? says he was born in 1965, which I'm not <sighs> thinking that that feel, that is not that doesn't sound old. That's not me. a boomer, really. Well, I mean, I guess it technically hits that like boomer special. It, I always thought boomers was more boomer like X, 1945 like right to 55 or something. You're almost yeah. in the Joneses area, which is a very thin um, Jeanette uh, generation. Because you had to keep up with the Joneses, therefore have a baby, you know. But um, mm. and it's only like a five to seven year, like split between the next generation. And hi, uh, Alma, I see you. Yo, <laughs> you look like anyway. a super villain, Thax. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was that was mine. I found that was wanting to get y'all's take on what y'all thought about it too, because I kind of agree with some of it. Like as I can understand, like people's attachment from that perspective. But I don't completely like say nope. This is completely steampunk. Everything else is trash. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot to disagree with, um, mm -hmm. but I can see why he would say steampunk has up and disappeared, because in that time frame, there were a number of um, producers and directors who tried to make steampunk style movies. Yeah, it was a sort of stretch where you got up quite a few of those. We had one in Steam Chest even, and the. Uh, Quite a few of them weren't that good or didn't make a lot of money. And so, you know, product, the distributors and, and uh, the money the people said, there. the money people said, no, we're not going to do that again. And so, yeah, it dried up. But we didn't go away. No, nope. we, we're just not we're still here to watch the good movies anymore. <laughs> we're just like, hey, look, there's a movie about about, you know, buildings eating other like other buildings now on big wheels. I enjoyed that movie for the sake of what it was. I did it was too. Pretty. The book. The storyline. The storyline was not great, but it was an excuse to have big. It's kind of like where I'm going to go see Dune. I understand that the book is going to have everything that you'd ever want from a science fiction novel. Apparently, it's going to be dry and slow and boring and fun and great, but the movie is going to be cinematically big, and that's what I go see a movie for. Is I want. I want my my eyeballs don't be, you know, that's the right word for it. Yeah. Bugged out due to the awesomeness. Kind of like Ready <laughs> Player One. I liked the movie. I know what the storyline was supposed to really be. And I know that it didn't fit. You know, you write a book about the computer world in the 80s. It's not going to fit to 2000. But the amount of pop culture they were able to cram in that movie was ridiculous. And I keep going back and watching it over and over again and keep finding like... More little spaceships. I'm like, hey, that's from Homeworld. Wow, I didn't see that the first time. Uh, like, like freaking tiny little like some some geek that probably relates to me more than I think he you know should. It's like oh, we're gonna put this little tiny speck right here. It says now it's that spaceship, and they'll never see it. <laughs> we're make that from a certain computer game. <laughs> but uh, wait, what did you say? I missed it. Make it Jason Mimosa. <laughs> oh. That's your name, Jason uh, Mimosa. I'll drink um, that. I, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah. Uh, Steampunk has really been a struggle uh, these last couple of years, though. At least, at least here, with nobody able to go go out or mm-hmm. do anything uh, or socialize, it, it's it's been rough. Um, so we just keep watching the same Key and Peel skit over and over and over. <laughs> I love that skit. <laughs> hey man, I'm Steampunk now. <laughs> <laughs> when did you think? <laughs> That would ever work. <laughs> that, even that sketch is like five years oh. old now. Yeah, it's almost back at like the same time period he was talking about in the, in the article, mm-hmm. like two thousand, mm-hmm. the two thousand twelve issue was just like everything steampunk. We're just gonna and China didn't know what it was about. They're just like we're just gonna put gears on stuff and send it out. They're, the Americans are buying weird stuff again, like. Stop the inflatable grills. Those are no longer selling. <laughs> Love my inflatable grill. <sighs> yeah, here we are, almost 2022. It's the freaking... We're, we're, we're the cybernetic flapper curls. Where are the fast racing... I mean, we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to deregulate pot, so, I mean, that's, I guess, what we're fighting for is the new age... Um, the new age alcohol... Uh, illegalization um you know we're going to relate everything we can to the 20s here so oh okay yeah, That's yeah, yeah okay i'm sorry i needed to lead in with a little more information of where my brain was going so yeah it's it's the 1920s but now it's the 2020s so um we're having a financial downturn near the end of all this here shortly so we got to enjoy it now while we're the 1920s fall. had the the uh, expensive automobile replacing mm-hmm. the we horse and buggy now we have the electric automobile we um, just got out of a major, well, I guess we're still in it now, but we're a little late. In 2008, 17 to, oh, ni- 1917 to ni- whenever Spanish flu ended. So we're kind of all in that same like economical st- setup. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was another parallel that I, I picked mm-hmm. up from the article sh- about how people are were afraid of new technology. And right now, here we are Everyone's with so many people afraid of a vaccine. Which isn't really new technology, but somehow this one is new. Um, There's a lot going on around that, considering that, I mean, they were already working on coronavirus vaccines since 2016. Not specifically for this um, one, but it was close enough. They were able to hijack years of years of research over to it. Sure, but it, so didn't, it wasn't presented to the public for them no, to, you know, it was not. to sink in slowly. And... Uh, I mean, I, I don't subscribe to this, but I, I try to understand those who who do why the the fear and uh, apprehension is is so uh, widespread uh, uh, amongst amongst people on the internet with full access to you know all of human knowledge. We we say, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's baffling. But yeah, interesting parallel is what I'm saying in yeah, that article. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and then I was thinking of aesthetics. Uh, we have the Art Nouveau going to Art Deco. Yes. Uh, so so that's happening. We're going from these. You know, <laughs> I saw a really funny picture. Pretty stuff to like very streamlined. Mm-hmm. That is that is true. I'm, I'm sorry to me to cut you off. Uh, continue. No, it's good. I saw this really funny picture. Erroneous in it. information on the interwebs. Yep. Fear cells. They're, well, I mean, newspapers in the 20s were just as happy to feed you garbage if it sold a paper. Yeah, oh, yeah. yellow journalism. And, and there's, I mean, think about, like, the consumer choices that people make. Like, some people like horror. They like horror movies. They like slasher stuff. They like um, gore. They like that jump scare whatever you know freddy the saw you know know, and some people really like that and then there are those of us who are like no that's not really my thing i like romance movies i like uh comedies i like whatever and i i think that that's you know whatever your your brain tracks are drawn to 
You know, there's some people that are just going to be really drawn into those um, conspiracy theories, conspiracy theories and fear, you know, the, the media that tells them there's stuff to be afraid of, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's what they're, they're kind of self selecting to, to go that way because they're, I mean, all the information is out there. Um, you know, there's, there's flat, dry scientific stuff about what's going on in the world. And then there's, oh my God, climate change, vaccines, blah, blah, blah. Let's all freak out. Chemtrails. You know, so it's kind of like you can choose how to consume your facts and how to feel about your facts. And it's all the, all the information is out there, though. Yeah, it's just it's it's now a problem like my mom was talking about when she was in the, when she was working for a newspaper and you were publishing stuff or even in research papers before when she was going for her law degree. Um, you had to find the one book that had the one piece of information you had. It was all about finding that one one thing and the memorizing where you found it. Today, it's all about remembering where you found it mm -hmm. and sorting through everything that is not what, you know, either doesn't fit what you want to talk about or is, you know, a fact. And it's just there's just so much flying around that it's hard to figure out. Well, if you go to three sources and it all say, oh, it's, you know, we're, we're you know, it's, it's the little, it's the green jelly you know, the mint jam is what's killing everybody. You see it three or four places. First off, mentally, your brain's already re starting to register. That's a pattern. And once you see something 10 times, it's considered almost truth to you. Mm -hmm. So, and the fact that we have 24 hour news cycle, just beating you to death. And then you have the internet emailing you stuff every, every day. And your phone pings you 18 different times a day saying, Oh, all this stuff from whatever news agency. And then you have your cousins, aunts and uncles throwing things on Facebook. They're the same forward, thing. Forward, forward. It's just so the, the Russians actually had an issue with this when uh, Western civilization was able to come in after the fall of the Soviet union. They did not have the ability to block out um, commercials or billboards. People were having wrecks on the side of the road because just billboards went up. They had no laws about how you would advertise. So you could have them as big as you wanted, wherever you wanted. They could have naked women on them. It was all just whatever you want. Like, TV was interesting right as the wall fell because all of a sudden they have all this freedom that they didn't know what to do with. And you had a lot of fight back because of it. You had a lot of people pushing because they never had, you know, they're just no longer squished with their, the way their freedom was. I remember when I was there, there was an 18 lane highway. They don't have overpasses like we do where you could have it like, you know, here in Austin, you have them everywhere. I mean, it's, you know, there's an overpass. Everyone knows what an overpass is. They don't even think, think about it. They had 18 lane highways that met like this. And so you had to like learn how to like follow your lane. Oof. And there was a Nokia billboard that spanned diagonally across this thing. And it was like stories tall. And it just said, it was just a, a cell phone. It was, the whole thing was black and it just kind of faded barely to red on one side and it had the Nokia phone and it just said Nokia. And then like entire sides of buildings just had the Coca-Cola symbol running down the side. And, you know, they were actually psycho psycho uh, psychologists were having so many people having issues because they didn't know how to block this out. They never had to deal with like basically a, a brain and a built in uh, advertisement blocker for their brain. They were just overwhelmed. And I'm starting to see that again, even with just us over here, which is as much news as we're being thrown at ourselves. We just can't handle it anymore. We're just bugging out and turning it off and just can't handle it mentally. But uh, that was an interesting thing I saw or as a, as a correlation here. Another correlation I'm seeing is that instead of skirts getting longer, we're all just moving straight over to uh, wearing fluffy pants. Pajamas all the yeah, time. Pajama pants now. We don't need we don't need skirts. Skirts no longer dictate our economy like they used to. You know, shorter shorter the skirt, the better we are doing in the economy. Longer the skirt, the worse the economy. Now we're just the hell with skirts. We're all now wearing fluffy pants. <laughs> so the, the the fluffy pants or the pajama pants indicate a bad economy or, yes. or, or a bad one. Oh, okay. we're heading to a very bad economy when everyone's moving to fluffy, fluffy pants. Moo-moos. <laughs> Sadly, those are only popular in like uh, recently tornado ridden uh, housing districts and trailer houses because they always can find that one person who, who gets on the news who's wearing a muumu. 
<laughs> talking about how terrible the whole thing was. Oh, Carolyn's, Carolyn's house just that. flew out of nowhere. She still owes me my crock pot, man, my crock pot back. <laughs> Bras and teeth. Bras and teeth. Bras. If you ever have to go on TV after a tornado, just put on a bra, put in your teeth. <laughs> just make it a check, you know. <laughs> uh, wow. We're just off in left field, aren't we? Sorry. I mean, oh, it's it, okay. This, this is what the episodes would be called. It's just, it, it's, it's off in left field. <laughs> yeah. Off in a field somewhere. Flavia was really good at derailing and taking us off into La La Land. I don't know. I thought he was <laughs> pretty good at us keeping back us to... back on it. I mean, honestly, because yeah. here we are. Look at us. We've Look what we've hit in an episode. We've gone to, like, financial stuff. We hit the iPhone. We've, like, compared everything to Art Deco. I mean, we're, we're, we're like, in and out. And, like, we're, like, a child. Aesthetics. Of, like, fashion. Technology. It, literally a kid with ADHD <laughs> holding a big thing of, like, the 800 thing of Crayolas that just went like this. <laughs> uh, and that's where we are <laughs> it has been about an hour uh, Jack Jack told me okay I can do this show tonight but maybe for just like 20 minutes yeah I know and look where we ended up I was like we're yeah. just going to have a quick drink and we're going to get off we're gonna go back. I'm going to tell Jack to leave so uh, starting next episode uh, I've had a number of people say they, they'd like to come on or be it's regulars, terrible. particularly uh, Lady Blue Stocking, who has been on here a number of times. And uh, she'll really class the place up. She's got, you know, education and knowledge and stuff. <laughs> um, awesome. Um, sorry, go on. No, just that uh, we we will have three talking heads here again. One of them, at least, will know what they're talking about, which will be a nice change. <laughs> I also had Movie Ninja. Um, I talked to him, and he'd be also willing to be. Oh, I liked him. I yeah, liked back him. on and off on the show if necessary. So I've actually been looking at doing some other things with him, too, on the side. And uh, he's already mentioned us a couple, like, well, not mentioned us completely. I haven't yet posted his video of he, what he did with us on YouTube either, but we're looking at doing the whole, like, you know, you shake my hand, I just shake your hand kind of thing on, on the, on the face. Mutual on the shout outs. Yeah. Mutual shout outs. We're like eight years old, you know, like, Hey guys, <laughs> welcome to my YouTube channel. We're going to do Minecraft. Sorry. I, I've also, uh, I, I started it's looking at the Texas steampunk connection dot, at, at gmail.com Flavio was talking to somebody or another about talking about their product and getting them on the show okay. like days before he left us. Mm. And at the time it's like, I'm sorry, I didn't get back to you. My recording stuff is a mess, but I'm, I'm pulling it together and I'll be right back with you. So I guess he won't, but that's okay. I got the emails and I will try to follow up and, okay. uh, We'll figure it out. We'll figure yeah. it out. We also we are figuring things there. out as we go here. Um, once this show is over, I've got to figure out what he else, what else he did to get it onto Podbean and stuff. Not really sure, um, yeah. but we'll work it. We'll work it out. We're gonna figure out uh, uh, all of his tricks. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I know yeah. there's a way you can download this on on um, off of Facebook. Did it and I accidentally downloaded everything and I had a massive file. Yeah, it was big. Um, it, I downloaded Facebook. No, I downloaded everything <laughs> you've ever posted on Texas Steampunk Connection. And wow. so it was, yeah, it was a, a yeah, I had to That's stop it when I realized what was going on because my hard drive was just going, Whoa! but no uh, more room for you. And like the red lights going off, the alarm clacks and <laughs> going, like, what are you doing? Like the computer started going red, glowing. Turn it off. Shut Slam it down. Yeah. Pull the plug. <laughs> Shut, it down. Shut it down. Shut it all down. <laughs> <laughs> having, uh, having, having a gold robot in the corner yelling at a trash box that's you know doing something to a wall <laughs> I don't want to know about. Uh, messing with trash compactors. So I'm gonna. Uh... 
let's see, do the thing that, that Flavio always did. Um, if you'd like to be in contact us with us, I, I mentioned Texas Steampunk Connection at gmail.com. You can uh, talk to us via Facebook, which is really the most uh, most accessible for us. We're going to see your comments. Um, we're on Twitter someplace, uh, but I don't recommend it. the complaint department. Uh, oh, yeah, the, complaint the complaint department on, on Twitter. Twitter. Send them there. Or if you really appreciate us, uh, we have a Patreon page that uh, we'd be happy to uh, see you on. Become a patron. Uh, we only ask for you know three dollars a month to help uh, us afford to keep this this Streamyard account and uh, other incidental expenses that that we have to be paid once Bias a year. Beers. So yeah, what we say is buy, buy us a beer. We really appreciate it. Particularly, we appreciate uh, Jenny Lynn and Ryan Shaver, who uh, are mem who are patrons, and uh, Kitty, who's who's come on this show. She is a patron, and uh, um, Rita is also a patron. So thank all three of you. We really appreciate it. Yes, that's all of our patrons, but we'd love to have more. Well, um, I'm to make real quick because he's he's a patron of Steam Chest. Oh, and he's also a maker in Steam Chest. Awesome. He has his own stuff in there. You, Thax, cool. have some of his stuff. Cool. I, I do. Cool, cool. Yeah. Greek God's Giggling is him. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. His little, like, wood, he had the wood burning stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. I Thanks, know. Mick. <laughs> he's, he's just, like, all sorts of connected over here. So let's wow. see. Let me, uh, I just want to say one thing real quick. Um, something that I said at uh, Flavio's service. Um, something that he would always say whenever we were talking about doing anything or going anywhere. He'd say, "I'm in." As as you probably, he's probably uh, on on this on on a podcast somewhere saying it. Uh, I'm in. And so, um, whatever you do, if you get a chance to do something weird, say it for Flavio. I'm in. Which is to say, if your friends are talking about making plans, just insert yourself in there. <laughs> I'm in. Just invite yourself. All right, I'm going to do it. Especially if your friends are like engaged and they're talking about going to the back room. Just <laughs> go right there for it. Just, just <laughs> do insert it for yourself. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. And until next time. Mind, Mind your, your gauges. gauges. Good night, everybody.